Welcome to Parenting Decoded, a podcast for practical approaches to parenting. I'm Mary Eschen. With the holiday season fast approaching, I wanted to take a few minutes out to support your parenting in a different way than normal. We're going to talk about your parents and how to manage them. Kids are hard enough, but some of you struggle with grandparents and relatives who all have great and well-meaning hearts, but who create unwanted issues when they deluge your kids with gifts. Last year, I did a podcast called Giving with a Glad Heart. It was episode 23. It talked about gift giving, both giving gifts to your kids as well as your kids giving to each other, and it touched on dealing with relatives. However, when working with a group of young families from my church recently, I was taken aback with how much distress grandparents as well as well-meaning aunt and uncles put a damper on the notion of giving gifts in some families. My husband and I had parents who were very restrained in their giving, so we really never had to deal with that. But what I'm going to call the gift monster, to give it a name, to give a name to the elephant in the room. In some families, it's big and it can really cause a lot of problems that young parents don't know how to tame. What am I talking about? See if you can see your own situation in the following gift monster descriptions. The first one is the robber. This is where you feel robbed of being able to give gifts to your own kids due to others wanting to give and taking up the prized items that you would like to be the one to give them. Grandpa really wants to give them the latest Xbox or a new bike, which was exactly what you were planning to do. Then what are you left with? Grandpa is doing this out of love, so we can't fault him for that, but it just doesn't feel right. We feel robbed. The next gift monster is the pressure cooker. This monster wants to pressure you into coming up with lists of things your kids need or want. Holidays are enough pressure with travel and parties and shopping that having relatives bugging us for detailed lists can stress some of us out. Some of you are great at making those lists, but some of us aren't, and it adds to the holiday stress, not to mention the predicament that your kids might not need much, and you have to make up gifts just to have something on a list. The next one is the gift mix-up. This is where the person who gives the gifts isn't a person anymore in the eyes of our kids. The kids get mixed up that there's an actual person behind the gifting who loves them. The relationship is one only based in gifts, not a relationship with the giver. If grandma always arrives with a gift, Grandma thinks she's getting love when those eyes light up, but as kids get older, an entitlement creeps in, and if the gifts stop or aren't the ones expected, then people like Grandma can get really hurt. Let's move along to the family values victim. You know the times when someone gives your kids a gift that you and your spouse have banned from your home due to your own family value choices? Some of us decide that Eco-friendly goods or non-branded toys or general neutral toys are what we want for our kids. Or maybe we don't want to introduce them to certain electronic devices until they're a certain age. Our values can fall victim to well-meaning relatives who just want to show their love with the latest and greatest amazing toy or device that just became available. They've waited in line forever just to get that first Xbox or American Girl doll or whatever, out of love for you and your kids, how can you say no when they show up with such a sacrificial gift? The next monster is the creativity criminal. Studies show that how too many toys harms creativity in kids. I'll include some links to articles from Psychology Today and Today's Parents in the podcast notes. The articles remind me how one of my sons always wanted yet another Lego set. He had plenty of Lego bricks, but those sets are so alluring to a kid. Why create when you can just build something beautiful based on a plan laid out for you? Good job for the Lego company, not so good for creativity. We need a few empty boxes with some markers and scissors once in a while. The next monster is Numbness St. Nick, is what I call. (laughs) One story I read about was an adorable little girl who was numb from opening up so many gifts at Christmas with all the relatives sitting around watching for her reaction. She'd smile like a robot and say thanks 
to put aside that present and move to the next present. Last Christmas, I got to spend some time with extended family and see grandkids opening their third set of gifts for the day. While it was exciting, there were only one or two gifts that the kids really paid attention to. Now we're going to move along to the entitlement enemy. Over time, this gift monster can create many monsters out of your kids. Feelings of entitlement can start to ooze out when they don't get exactly what they want. Hopefully that won't be you, but over time, it's possible to create an unwanted outcome. Last but not least, the Clutter King. This last gift our gift monster leaves for us is a home littered with stuff. This leads many of us to design special storage systems to sort different types of items and make regular runs to Salvation Army and Goodwill. Our relatives mean well, but do they have any idea where we'll have to put all this stuff that they give us and our kids? So that's the list. Did you see your life being consumed by any of these particular gift monsters? If so, listen on to what you can do. Now that you've named your gift monster, How do you tame it? First and foremost, you need to have a conversation to set boundaries. Just like you do with your kids, I'm going to suggest holding a family meeting with relatives. In this case, you're going to flip the audience from your kids to your parents or your spouse's parents. Feel free to include any other relatives that need reining in. If both sets of parents are needing boundaries, you can arrange for one meeting But it might be two different meetings or even more meetings if you have divorced parents involved. It might be three or four meetings. The point here is not to have a casual conversation with anyone. Take them to lunch or dinner if they're local. Hire a babysitter if you can dedicate the time to talk. Or have your spouse watch the kids while you go out if you can't afford a babysitter. Be in a public place if you have a feeling that they might overreact. People are usually more restrained in public places. If they're not local, set up a Zoom call or phone call after your kids are in bed. You and your spouse should spend a few minutes drafting up some talking points, especially if you think you're going to get a bunch of pushback. Now that you have a location and you've invited people, what do you do? Well, at the meeting, rule number one is make sure you let all your gift givers Know that they're loved and appreciated. They are special and you need to treat them with as much care as you possibly can. Explain your challenges with the gift monster in your life to them. Whichever one is plaguing you, whether it's the clutter king or the creativity criminal or numbness Saint Nick, you need to communicate what the problem is. It might sound something like, Our kids are learning that the world is made of material things. We want them to learn to love you as people through time and attention, not things. Gift giving has gotten out of control and we need your help in reining things in. Something like that. The next thing you need to do is set clear and firm boundaries. Have some ideas about what you'd like to have done so that there are choices for everyone to think about. Have them pick and choose and compromise for what can work in your situation. It might look like, you know, here's here's my ideas. Using only experience gifts like movie passes, tickets to the zoo, annual passes to a children's museum or water park. I do want to confess that, that there's a strong bias by me for giving the gift of time, which is what this is. There's nothing like a date with grandma and grandpa for relationship building, especially with some special activity involved. Other ideas to talk about could be gifts of lessons, swimming, art lessons, dance, piano, whatever the kids or the parents would like them to learn. You could always talk about donations to a college fund or maybe setting up a coupon book that the grandmas or grandpas put together with things like paint your nails or uh, sandcastle building with grandpa or riding bikes to get frozen yogurt. Just a bunch of little coupons that the kids can use all year long um, to do things with grandma and grandpa or aunts and uncles, whoever. I love to talk about an option of books, as many as the grandparents want. You could also set a limit on how many gifts per child or maybe even a physical size limit so that you don't overrun your house with, with large gifts. Or another favorite 
that I love for just your immediate family, but you might like to set it up for grandparents, is the four gift tradition that I mentioned in my podcast last year, where you give them something they want, something they need, something to wear, and something to read. I love it. Four gifts. It's simple. Whichever solution you come up with, you need to be really firm in your boundaries and define consequences. Yikes. Yeah. What might they be for your own parents? Well, here are a few ideas. Feel free to have follow-up family meetings to clarify when things don't go as you planned or as you agreed. It's okay to not have it go well the first time, but keep at it. The other thing that you could do with really unruly relatives is you could intercept the gifts at the door, whether it's holidays or birthdays. Or you could set up a policy where you open gifts later instead of in front of the relatives. They can sit under the tree and just wait for everyone to leave, and then you can open them. The other thing you could do is you could return the gifts and put the money into a college fund or other savings. I know those seem really harsh, but if you let your parents and your other aunts, relatives and everything overrun you, then over time, it's just going to keep festering and really drive you crazy. So I want the holidays to be what really good times for you or birthdays or whatever. I want to do, I, before I finish, I want to tell you two amazing stories of young moms who tackled their gift monsters head on, and they still work to this day. The first is the toy family limit. This family lives in a beautiful and natural environment and wanted to promote the outdoors and creativity. Their family toy rule is that for each time their two sons get any gifts, they can have only four toys each. The relatives can give as many toys as they'd like, but for each toy that comes into the house, one goes out to a local shelter or donation station. Ouch, that's a tough one especially when my girlfriend was the grandma. The couple was totally strict about their rule. Grandma was generous with her time instead, and now she didn't have to even have pressure to buy toys or look for T-shirts while she was on vacation or anything like that, since she knew it was her time and being creative that was her gift to her grandsons. All I can say is amazing and brave of that family. I love it. The next family is what I call the How Christmas is Celebrated family. This young couple knew that boundaries needed to be set when they got married. Yes, married. They told both sets of parents that they will be spending Christmas Eve services at their own church and would always be celebrating in their own home on Christmas morning. And their parents lived pretty local. However, they would always be willing to go to visit after that. My friend said that their families thought it was a bit harsh when they didn't even have kids yet. But 14 years later and three kids later, it's turned out really well. They definitely make sure both sets of grandparents get equal access, but the firm and loving boundaries and consistency has kept their relations with all relatives really solid. Communication was the key. As I finish this podcast with you, I do want to give you some wise words. Take it slow. Take in what you've learned. Work on just one part at a time or one side of the family at the time. Maybe for you, it would be to plant a seed for next year that maybe things can be different instead of upsetting the apple cart this year. It's all okay. At least you might know now that you're not the only one who has a gift monster to tame. And hey, you might never tame it. But know that there's empathy and love for having to get through each season. If you have a story you'd like to tell me about, I'd love to hear it. If you want advice, I'm here for you. Just email me, mary at parentingdecoded.com. I hope you found some of these ideas that can help tame your gift monsters into loving and warm gift angels so that you and your kids can enjoy a lifetime of enchanted moments with all those who love them. That's all for now. Have a blessed rest of your holiday season.